patients with celiac disease come in all shapes and sizes and of all ages and it can present at any age. Well, celiac disease is a reaction of the immune system in the intestine to certain proteins and the proteins come from wheat, barley and rye. Those proteins, which we collectively term gluten, um, are generally considered something that is good for us, but for patients with celiac disease and probably for some genetic reasons, their immune system reacts against it and sets up a inflammation or damage in the lining of the intestine. And that's where we are trying to digest and absorb the gluten, but rather what happens is the, the gluten proteins set up this reaction. And in that reaction, you get damage to the lining of the small intestine. And the small intestine is lined, the normal small intestine is lined with villi. Villi are like finger-like projections, and they're there really to maximize the amount of working area we have for digestion and absorption. And it's been said that if you could iron out the small intestine completely flat, that it would cover a tennis court. Now, of course, in celiac disease, if you lose all those finger-like projections and you get damage and it ends up being flattened, so you end up with an intestine that, look, instead of looking like a deep pile carpet, it looks more like a tiled floor, then you end up with a surface area that's substantially small or maybe more like a table tennis table top, but a much smaller working surface area. Now, we know that from work that we've done here um, that celiac disease affects a variable amount of the small intestine. In some patients, it's just 1% of the intestine. In others, it can be 60 or indeed 100% of the small intestine. And the consequences can be very variable. Some patients have terrific diarrhea, weight loss. If they're young children, failure to thrive. Uh, they may be anemic. They may have um, severe osteoporosis because of lack of vitamin D and calcium. They may have um, other consequences of their, you know, they may have grown to a shorter height than they would have achieved other than having celiac disease. It can affect the permanent teeth, and often dental loss is pretty common in patients with celiac disease. Um, but there are other patients who don't seem to get those same symptoms. They get problems like anemia, where they're maybe they've got low iron and low hemoglobin, and especially if they can't respond to, you know, to oral iron, so their doctor tells them, take iron but they don't respond. It may be because they can't absorb the iron. And again, that can be a clue to celiac disease. Yeah. The treatment is safe. You know, going on a gluten-free diet is a safe endeavor. It's not easy. And because of how pervasive wheat especially is in our diet and, all, and there are many hidden ingredients that are made from that that can be a problem for somebody with celiac disease, it's certainly not an easy diet, not one that should be followed casually. A, a precise diagnosis is necessary to justify being on a gluten-free diet for life. Um, it can be socially restricting. It can um, make it more expensive. It certainly is more expensive to adhere to a gluten-free diet because you have to source foods in special ways, either by mail order or from specialty suppliers or from manufacturers that take great care to avoid contamination of their food with gluten. So that's an area... That, and it, to be on a gluten-free diet doesn't just require, uh, let's say, self-teaching, go on the internet, you know, the, you know, look for information, but to, you know, really requires a, a, a consultation with an expert dietitian, somebody with expertise in celiac disease. In yeah, but I, I, think, I think to summarize, the most important thing is if somebody suspects they have it is to be tested before it's treated. The second thing is celiac disease is not a trivial disease. It can be associated with substantial complications. One thing we didn't mention is there had been, it had been thought maybe 20, 30 years ago that people who had celiac disease as children could outgrow it. That's not the case. If somebody had a diagnosis as a child, and they, they almost certainly still have the disease and they should be gluten free. Um, so this is an area where we've got new data, new information, it is rapidly changing. Um, but it's also one where I would see some you hope for the future in terms of finding the people who have got hidden celiac disease, understanding what that means in terms of their health, and giving people the tools who have celiac disease to live better lives and to be less feeling less socially restricted and be able to live a normal, essentially normal lifestyle with an interesting, varied, and healthy diet. If you have a family history of celiac disease, brother, sister, parent, or child with the disease, I think there's very good evidence that 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 you should be tested for celiac disease. Um, if you've got premature osteoporosis, 
certainly type 1 diabetes, it certainly should be considered, uh, patients with unexplained infertility, a whole host of other ways in which celiac disease can present. It can mimic irritable bowel syndrome, which is obviously much more common than celiac disease. Uh, again, it's a question of once the disease is suspected, a test should be performed before the diet is altered. But the big challenge is getting people to think about the diagnosis.